Good evening and thank you for your patience. I am Shivani Thakkar, your host for today. I have been with Signet in the marketing department for the past two years. Our topic for today is UA invoicing from compliance to competitive edge. The webinar will guide you through the essential of invoicing in the UAE, covering upcoming mandates and how businesses can turn compliance into a competitive advantage. We will discuss the what, why and how of invoicing along with practical steps for smooth implementation. Our goal is to help you stay compliant, efficient and ready for the future regulations in the UAE. Without further delay, let me introduce our speakers, Mr. Neeraj Hathi Singh. Neeraj is a pioneer in digital finance transformation, driving strategic innovation in a compliance solutions with a focus on VAT and invoicing solutions globally. Ms. Diana Kesiris. Diana is the recognized leader in a compliance solution and a people member with over 15 years of experience helping businesses navigate complex regulatory landscapes. She brings expertise in implementing digital strategies for tax and compliance. Mr. Akash Chaudhary. Akash specializes in digital transformation with a focus on compliance and automation. He has successfully led invoicing projects across the Middle East, guiding organizations to maintain compliance while enhancing operational efficiency. Let's make this webinar interactive. Please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A section during the webinar and we'll address them at the end of the session. Over to you, Neeraj, Diana, and Akash. Thanks, thanks, Shivanj. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to talk about UAE invoicing today. And I'm very honored to have our managing director Neeraj Hathi Singh on the on the call as well. And we have uh, an e invoicing specialist uh, uh, Diana as well on the call. She brings up a lot of experience on how e invoicing implementation works in different countries. And Neeraj has been pioneered into implementation and rollout of uh, e invoicing products in India, in Middle East, Southeast Asia, as well as Europe. So hope we can add value to your time today. So, Neer, sir, if you want to have some opening remarks or Diana, we can kick off. And uh, invoicing in UAE is still a uh, distant away, but I think... Uh, sir, you're on mute. We are not. I'm not on mute. Uh, yeah, it's working now. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, invoicing in UAE is still a distant away. It will get implemented in 2026. But there is much more to invoicing than just simply complying with what the regulatory authorities kind of uh, talk about. And you should actually take it up as a business process automation, improving the business processes and getting the maximum out of the invoicing mandate that's going to come in so that you get benefits out of the whole process and the business becomes much more efficient and much more automated. So this is where I will just kind of uh, start on to it and uh, let Akash and Diana kind of take the lead onto the presentation and I will kind of chip in on certain points that I want to kind of talk about into it. So over to you Akash and Diana. Thanks, thanks Neeraj. So without taking further time, I'll quickly jump on to a quick intro about uh, a background about Signet. So we are about 24 year young organization and we have operations across the globe. I'll keep it very quick. And uh, we have all the key certifications needed for a large enterprise to handle their financial transactions. So whether it be bank or whether it be a manufacturing or even a pharma company, we have all the certifications right from SOC 1, SOC 2, ISO and other data protection, even GDPR to ensure that your transactions are safe with us. And we also ensure that we have the regional data policies. So all our invoicing and other systems are hosted within the geography of, of where your operations are to ensure that your transactions data is not, never leaving the country. We have got all the accreditations required for multiple countries across the globe, right from India, UAE, KSA, UK, and few of the other countries as we speak. And this ensures that we are able to provide you the right e invoicing solution for an end-to-end -end compliance. Over to you, Diana. Thank you, Akash and Niraj. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this um, webinar today. Uh, this is a conversation about uh, my favorite topic, electronic invoicing. Um, uh, I'm the director of uh, Legal Analytics, and we are um, electronic invoicing advisor for governments and uh, for businesses as well. 
So um, next slide, please. Um, it's going uh, just to explain um, what, why, and how is electronic invoicing implemented uh, globally. And then we can bring the, uh, the concepts to a UAE market. So basically, electronic invoicing uh, was introduced um, by Latin American countries 20 years ago. That is the, it's nothing new. This is a very old concept uh, where a com countries like Mexico, Chile, Colombia, eh, they try to minimize uh, the VAT, the tax evasion, because it was very high at that time. It was 20 years, it was implemented in Mexico, and then with a devolution of the data collected through electronic invoicing, eh, they realized there was a lot of information to take to to take from uh, from electronic invoicing, and uh, they can if they can um, uh, put additional services to taxpayers and uh, to other governments, for example, uh, customs. Um, we can see the evolution of tax administrations over the years. Before, very long time ago, so tax administrations were functioning by a tax, so division of a VAT, corporate tax, excise tax. Then we have functions uh, by client. What are the sizes if a large, a small, or a, a small or, or big uh, companies? So, but now tax administrations are focused more on processes. What are the processes? How is the life cycle of the taxpayers and how we can minimize and reduce the tax gap through electronic invoicing and how can we uh, I put additional services, online services, uh, for for uh, taxpayers. Electronic invoicing uh, is not only used for tax; it's used for commercial purpose. So, as you can see in the UA market, uh, is take is considered electronic invoicing to minimize VAT uh, leakage using the data from electronic invoicing. Here is where the, we need to emphasize the quality of the data has to be very high in order to avoid possible penalties in the future when tax administrations will pre-populate returns on your behalf. Increase efficiency. This basically means the way is an easy way to communicate between taxpayers and tax administration. Tax administration which is not we will not we can see tax administration as a entity, a standalone entity that will work from 8 to 5 p.m. It will be 24 hours entity that it will be collecting your data in real time all the time. So here is when communication is a collaboration and communication improve and at the same time a streamline processes because they, they will they will reduce time in audits, for example, in the future. Facilitate new policy making decisions. And this is very important when they have vast data from electronic invoicing. So the governments will be able to make informed decisions where is the set where and how are the sectors that need tax relief. They will uh, put new incentive, for example, for a specific sector. In this case, the UAE can be the oil and gas sector. It depends on the uh, of the results of the data. And at the same time, they can evaluate the pricing. Is the pricing is the fair price that all companies are selling products, goods and services in the UAE reasonable up to the market or not? So there are a lot of uh, analytics that tax administrations will do with with the data collected from electronic invoicing. Mm, so if anyone has any question, please feel free to uh, to ask. Uh, we are here just to uh, to share what we know and to learn what are your uh, questions as well and your requires. We are here for you, basically. So what is an invoice and what is not invoice? And this is a very common example um, where a lot of com uh, companies and there is a misunderstanding that a PDF is an in electronic invoice because we can share the uh, PDF file in uh, by email, for example. 
So, and this is not the case. Invoice basically is the document that it will tell uh, what are your goods, services, uh, when and how and to whom you are selling these goods and services. So, this is basically the, you will have a lot of information. Is your data, financial data that you are going to be shared with the tax administration and they will cross check this data with different uh, governance entities in the UAE and in all tax administrations. So invoice is a document that will contain your transactional data, financial data. Electronic invoice is the document that is represented in electronic format. What is electronic format? XML. So already tax administration, a minister of finance uh, released the, what is the format of the electronic invoice, which is P, um, XML. XML, and the reason why is 90% uh, of countries who are adopted electronic invoicing use XML because it's a structured data. This is the case we have in KSA. KSA introduced PDF with embedded XML because PDF alone is not, and it's not considered an electronic invoice. Of course, we will have to deal with both because for tax managers, we need to have a representation of your invoice. If you uh, are going to cross share your data uh, invoices with your tax return, you will not be able to understand and see the data with the XML file. You will need to convert to a PDF just to have the, the representation of your invoice. But this is worth to note that this is not considered as an electronic invoice in the eyes of, LA, of the Ministry of Finance for most of transactions, except for export, export transactions, which are uh, already mentioned that is only PDF use. So uh, three key elements to issue an electronic invoice. So this of course, there is a lot of uh, data elements, data dictionary that will be shared in the future with the, all uh, by the Ministry of Finance and Tax Administration. But there are consistently three main uh, key uh, elements for a, to issue an electronic invoice. VAT registration, and this is important because uh, this is the uh, unique reference that Tax Administration will have to cross share your data. Electronic invoice, we have a electronic signature and the format will be XML. Do you have any comment here, Akash? Yeah, so what I was going to say is uh, this electronic signature is a very important element. What we have seen with our experience in Saudi as well as in Malaysia is generally in Malaysia, you need a third party electronic signature on top of your invoice, every e invoice that you generate. And in Saudi, what what Zatka provided was a cryptographic stamp. So for B2B invoices, Zatka themselves provided this electronic signature. And if you are doing a B2C, they allowed you to sign the invoice yourself. So it every authority has taken a different approach on to how the electronic signature should be embedded onto the e-invoice, which is finally being rolled out to your buyer. Uh, and and XML and PDF is a really good combination because well, really, invoices and XML, which the system would understand the language, but the representation of it for human readable is the PDF. And that's what PDF embedded XML that Zatka introduced in Saudi has become a very well uh, used case for other other authorities to follow as well. Yes, but what we know so far, I... What we know from the uh, Ministry of Finance, what will the uh, invoicing implementation roll out in the UAE? Uh, they will have a lot of phases. Uh, here is a really um, overview. What are the steps they are taking uh, to roll out the uh, electronic invoicing? So we have a legislation to come out in uh, Q2 2025, and December 2025 will be the rollout. How will be the rollout? Basically, we have a phase manner, which 90% of the tax administrations uh, use. Uh, it's a phase manner. It, they will start with voluntary, voluntarily um, approach, starting by large taxpayers, and then they will expand the scope. So 
this is a, the a, this one could be one of the approach that will be taken to be compliant and the reporting and go live will be July 2026. Do you have any comment, Niraj? I think uh, the most important thing is not to wait for the timelines to come in, be ahead of the schedule, work out the strategy of the challenges that you will be facing into it and not kind of just rely on to it because this is not a clearance model. It is more of a reporting model, but not rely that because it's just a reporting model, we will take care of it post facto. You will have to kind of work towards considering it as, as a clearance model because every reporting model in future is converted into a clearance model. So there are kind of don't take it lightly, look at it much more seriously and try and figure out the challenges that you'll face as an organization to comply to the requirements. So start early. That's the most important point that I'll kind of request to all taxpayers. Yes, uh, I think this is a good point, Niraj, when um, you mentioned electronic invoicing is considered a very light topic for most of organizations, when in, in reality, it has a lot of implication, not only for tax departments, but in every single part of the organization, it has implication, legal, uh, even sometimes marketing, um, finance, operations, every single part of the organization needs to be aware what is electronic invoicing, why it's important, how is the, uh, will be the impact as well. So we will talk about later uh, how we can start, what we can do now to start, because sometimes you know, we, there is no re regulations, so we, can, we can't do anything, which in reality, companies can do a lot, a lot of things now to at least to have a clear visibility what the status of your data because this is the most important part. If you, the quality of your data, the data is not right, is not compliant with the current legis legislation, so this will, you will have a lot of um, issues in the future, or challenges and possible penalties from tax administrations as well, because they will know exactly what you have, what you, you don't have, what are your customers, who are selling to, uh, how much you are receiving, everything. So. And we will talk about this later, what steps you can do to start now uh, to be ready for electronic invoicing. So far, transactions to be covered is B2B, B2G. We are expecting, we are expecting uh, the government will introduce in the future B2C transactions as well. And the reason why is because uh, electronic invoicing has to cover everything. It's not about um, one type of transaction that uh, I think this is one of the um, of the way that was introduced uh, in Saudi Arabia, some transactions like exempted transactions were not uh, under the scope of uh, electronic invoicing, which in our viewers and electronic invoicing advisors, uh, this uh, was, this uh, gave a, a window for taxpayers to come to have, uh, no, to, to increase uh, the, the tax, the, the tax fraud. So, the purpose of covering every, all transactions and with electronic invoicing is tax administration will not have any window for taxpayers to um, to promote a tax fraud. Validation of tax data. So here is where uh, you need to have a really good partner on electronic invoicing and third party provider a technology as they will be able to validate your data and transfer the data to the Ministry of Finance or Tax Administration. So here is he's not only validated the data that is given by the tax administration, but also you can have a lot of cross check, internal cross checks that you can do before sharing the data with tax administration. And one of them, for example, that we discussed uh, during this uh, session with uh, with Akash was um, the, the, valid, the tax registration. So uh, the, are the invoices under this specific tax registration uh, according uh, accord, are, are aligned with your trade license, for example. So uh, if 
you, we have one legal entity and the trade license says, uh, I'm selling, um, and selling cars are your invoices related to this economic activity or not. Uh, this is very important because there are some uh, issues as well with the eco activities performed by, by some uh, entities um, with the registered uh, activities. So if there are any discrepancy between these two, um, two documents, invoice and trade license, uh, so there will be a potential highlight from tax administration as a, as a taxpayer risk. Uh, Pre-population of VAT returns. Uh, of course, this um, pre-population will not happen immediately. It will, uh, it will pass over time uh, when they collect more data from electronic invoicing. And uh, they will not be, uh, it depends how they will collect the data and how uh, the quality of the data as well. And they will be able to pre-populate certain phase of the VAT returns, not the entire VAT return at the moment. Integrations. Integrations uh, refers basically to uh, integrate systems, uh, legal entities with the electronic invoicing providers. And here is where there are in this, especially in this region, there is a lot of um, challenges in integrations where it's very difficult given the, um, the region has a lot of companies are managing a lot of uh, legacy systems. There is a, mm. uh, there is a, a lot of um, challenges with integrations systems that will not be able to integrate with any uh, any any other system. So I think here, Akash, if you can share your experience, uh, how come what companies are doing? If there is you no, know, what are you doing to solve the problem of companies that they it's difficult to integrate to do the integration? I think uh, very very valid point, uh, Diana. There that. It is one of the very critical factors uh, of sorting out the integration for any investing project because if there is any issue in the integration, it means the solution that you have prepared for investing fails, and and in turn it impacts your business. So what we have done with with that is for all critical applications we have our uh, API driven integration, but since you rightly highlighted there are legacy applications which are not ready for the api integrations and that's where we leverage the other technologies such as a file based integration even bots we even directly integrate with the database so there are multiple different methods and we have got about a plethora of about 10 to 12 different etl platforms within our ecosystem which actually integrates with all these different types of legacy systems to ensure that the data is extracted validated and is rightly sent to the authorities in a timely manner. And at the same time, this integration also have to be robust and have minimum downtime. So that's another aspect of that, that if there is any issue with the, with the ETL platform or if there are any hiccups into it, there should be notification mechanisms. So if there are challenges, the respective people are notified and you are able to sort the issue in a timely manner uh, rather than it impacting your day-to-day -day businesses. Because at the end, it is e-invoicing and your invoices needs to be reported to the authorities. So uh, we have done about more than 500 integrations in India and Middle East. And I, I can say that the, the leading ERP such as SAP, Oracle, or Microsoft Dynamics are, are very easy to work with when it comes to integration. They have so many options of API and file. But the legacy applications, that's where the challenges would start coming in. And the second point which I want to highlight here is sometimes as, a, as an enterprise, we take a call that let's integrate only the core ERP, not the billing solution. Well, that's not the right approach because the invoice where the system it is getting generated needs to be sent across and not a summary. And hence the, the applications, the tier one and tier two applications, which are actually the billing application or the end billing application, they need to be integrated. The data needs to be fetched from those systems and then sent to the authority. And that's where the most of the challenges come in. Hello? Yes. Yes, Diana. Yes. Are you so, able to so, uh, yes, yeah. uh, it's interesting what you said, the last part, uh, Akash. Uh, if you can just um, just explain uh, the last part when you said uh, which which area, we how we can do the integration, the second point. I think is okay. uh, uh, so again 
On to the second point, uh, again, the ETL platforms come into play because when I'm talking about tier one and tier two uh, billing applications, let's say you have a core ERP and then a billing application around it, which are integrated to the ERP uh, at a summary level, not at a transaction level. Our systems actually uh, integrate with those systems at a, at a transaction level through the file based and through direct database interfaces. And also we deploy utilities within the stores and the, and the different uh, outlets that you might have to ensure that those applications are able to generate the e invoice needed there and there. And then that can be reported to the authority within the prescribed time limit of let's say 24 hours or 48 hours. Yes, it makes sense uh, because everything is transactional and it is the right, right. approach. Yes, True. exactly. We can't we can't do any summary level reporting here. Yes. Yes, and this is very important when sometimes a uh, um, and most of the time actually tax professionals are involved in uh, electronic invoicing. Where and how we are going to choose the electronic invoicing provider? Uh, sometimes uh, tax professionals are not really familiar with the technology um, and what is integration, how it will happen. But uh, I would say because I'm tax professional myself as well. And I would say we, do, we don't have to be afraid to ask any question to technology provider and uh, they will be able to solve all your problems, all your challenges. So and ask questions. I will encourage to ask questions to the service provider. Uh, what is the level of service? Uh, what happened if the system is blocked? So what is the alternative solution? So because if you stop, you really need to rely on your invoicing provider because if the system is not robust enough, you will stop the operations and you companies will lose a lot of money as well. They will mm -hmm. not be able to set, do any, any transaction to perform. So this is very important to uh, select an invoicing provider. We has a robust system and you can just work together as a partner and you can be very clear. These are my level of services and these are the solutions that we are giving to you. And I think this is a, we have a very good experience with Signet. Do you want to and, add uh, something, Niyash? Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to add one point over there. And that is something when you're looking at invoicing, you should not look at it in isolation to the VAT law. So whatever invoice you prepare has to be vetified or kind of the verifications or the validations of the VAT law also has to pass through the invoicing details that you are sending to the government authorities. So when you actually kind of collaborate your VAT returns and more or less uh, transaction level information or maybe kind of uh, multiple types of information will have to be provided to the authorities. At that time, you don't face challenges of reconciliation of your data. So it is very important to select a, a kind of invoice provider who has a collaboration in terms of VAT return and the invoicing solution. So you take care of the both. So that is one point which I just wanted to add to what you and Akash said over here. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, this, is, this is a very uh, important point, as well as implication of corporate tax as well. Uh, so, and so this is one of the studies as well from uh, from a IB um, International Inter American Bank. So when electronic invoicing is going to be implemented, you need to have in mind that only the quality of the data and one data will be used and reused for different purpose. This is the point of view from the tax administration. And this is the point of view that all businesses should take. If we select, if we share one data, one master data, uh, you need to use the same uh, data for different purposes, for VAT, for corporate tax, for excise tax. You will not be able to be, have different sources of data uh, for each tax because these were um, complex sectors will increase. Identify for businesses. So here, uh, the tax administrator, uh, minister of finance highlight, this is the uh, tax registration number. And the UA, there is something very specific because we have tax registration number for VAT, tax registration number for corporate tax. So it will be more likely that the identifier for businesses will be referring to VAT. However, it needs to be clarified by the tax administration as well in the future. Which one, which is the tax registration number uh, they will identify. And uh, it might have some changes in the future because tax administration, which will have a database 
a unique database with the taxonomy with un unique identifier of businesses. You cannot have a different tax registration number for different purposes. So it might change in the future. And data security. This is a um, very uh, important topic as well. And sometimes it's not very it, it's not very well discussed uh, during uh, webinars. Uh, it's about the, the risk of electronic invoicing uh, systems to um, to to uh, cyber attacks, because in the it, there are some cases in the past that uh, systems electronic invoicing systems were uh, attacked, and they retrieve they took the data from different businesses and they sell the data to the competitors. For example, they will see what are the activities, what is the price, uh, and this is something that uh, we need to really be sensitive. And again, this is where invoicing providers should give Correct. a lot of uh, confidence to to the taxpayers and businesses that this will not happen. Your data will be secure. Uh, Niraj, do you yeah, I'm laughing because uh, you brought up this point because this is like happening so rampant and kind of the invoicing data is sold to competitors, invoicing data is sold to the financial institution. So this happens so, so frequently in today's time. And you have to be sure. So yes, I think uh, the selection, and I think we have touched base on to this point. So I think one more point which I feel is important is data localization. Because it's extremely important that your data stays into the geography that you are, and it should not move out of that particular geography. And this is kind of an unwritten rule. It means even if the tax authorities mention it explicitly or they don't uh, kind of mention it or they mention it implicitly, it is important that you localize your data and it remains into the geography that it is. So securing your data so that it's not going out of to any of your competitor or to the financial institutions. At the same time, it's important that you localize the data and it is stored into the geography that you are into it. So I think uh, these are extremely important points and I was just laughing because you brought it up because this is very, very critical point for people to know and understand about it. And it's hardly spoken or talked yes. about into the uh, webinars. Yes, uh, this was um, raised uh, by the Minister of Finance, as you rightly say, it's no mention uh, during webinars. Uh, cybersecurity is nothing to do with electronic invoicing and as part of our advisory, um, so we brought that part as well that data, uh, cybersecurity is very important and the, and actually as part of the, um, uh, of the process for accreditation process, they should perform cybersecurity uh, you know, testing as well to invoicing providers, but uh, this is something that uh, we will see if this happen or not. However, uh, as uh, as as a company, we are going to provide this service as well. But this is very important. Uh, I don't, I, in my experience, uh, implementing electronic invoicing in Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, companies don't ask about data security. They only say, ah, oh, do you have this certification? Yes, this is my ISO certification. With this, is enough? No, it's not enough. Companies should perform a cybersecurity uh, test properly to make sure the data is secure with that invoicing provider. Correct, Tana. So that's where the VAPT test and the SOC 2 and the SOC yes. 1 compliance certifications come very handy. So I think any, any taxpayer who's looking for a solution must ask for these uh, these VAPT certifications and other uh, SOC 2 certifications. Uh, one question here, uh, Nira, Niraj and Akash, if, if there is any potential businesses in the UAE and they will say, I would perform by, we will pay and by myself, I will perform uh, penetration testing to the invoicing provider to your system, you will allow to do that? Uh, yes, we yeah. allow to do that. And uh, we have multiple such cases where financial institutions and large taxpayers have, would have done that. So we go through about 100 plus such uh, yeah test during a year, which are a third party test onto our system. And that also kind of helps us to ensure and be comfortable that our uh, mechanisms are well in place and we are able to suffice to this requirements. And I think uh, we have gone through such tests uh, through three of the largest uh, top 10 banks in the world. 
so they have kind of uh, passed our systems and our processes into it's out of the top 10 banks three have kind of tested us for such things so that helps in ensuring that our systems and processes are rightly in place at the same time it also helps that the data security that we have that governance in place is very very stringent so in both side it helps and uh, another point which kind of i talk a lot into it because we are bootstrapped we don't have a kind of a investor pressures to ensure that we have to show numbers so we are more uh, kind of uh, responsible in terms of giving that confidence and comfort to our clients than just kind of running out of after numbers so that also makes a difference to us as an organization where data security is paramount and far more important than anything else I, I think this is amazing and 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 here the i think the audience is more tax managers we need to uh, be aware that this is possible. If you ask any other invoicing provider, can we do penetration testing? They will say, no, we are compliant. It's enough. We are, it happened in Saudi Arabia. Companies, tax invoicing, invoicing providers, they, they claim we are, we are compliant because we were listed uh, in the, in SADCA website. But this, this list is not certification. It's just they're willing to be compliant. It's no certification here. They will be certified. However, a tax administration will not have any responsibility if something happened with these taxpayers. You need to select your tax to your invoicing provider very right in, in the right manner because a lot of invoicing providers will say penetration testing. No, this is not possible. And um, I've been in this situation, uh, and to be honest, uh, this is amazing that you will be able to do that. There will be a little bit more investment uh, from the uh, from the business, but uh, it's worth it because your data will be secure. And this is very high risk, especially in this region and everywhere, actually. So mm. this is good. Yeah. Akash, can we move to the Yeah. 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 So this is just where the impacts and how uh, some benefits from electronic invoicing in Italy, so decrease a uh, uh, decrease uh, VAT gap. So we've seen in Mexico, for example, now 20 years after electronic invoicing was implemented, 90% of pre-population of VAT returns and corporate tax are accurate in that region, and a uh, companies we don't have to file VAT returns because they just need to accept 90%, 95% of the data is right and if for VAT, if for corporate tax. So this was achieved at 20 years. And with the 20 years implementation of electronic invoicing as well, they will be able to have all accounting uh, in electronic manner. Uh, they extend the, um, the, the electronic methods to other documents. So basically it's a very um, good uh, results that are having from uh, out of electronic invoicing. Uh, we have as well as uh, some examples for Colombia as well. Uh, we, uh, electronic invoicing at uh, the invoice is used as a negotiable, negotiable instrument. So they use the electronic invoicing approved by the tax administration uh, in factoring. So there are a lot of uh, development in factoring uh, platforms uh, to negotiate all electronic invoicing. It depends on regulations, but it's happening in Latin America, uh, in Colombia specifically. So I think we talked uh, already about the importance of tax registration, and uh, I just want to highlight very quickly here that uh, the tax registration is the identifier uh, as a common identifier for electronic invoicing to do data analytics from the tax administration perspective. And this, that's why this is very aligned with the recent um, change from tax administration that they will not do cancellation of your, uh, of your registration, they will do your deregistration. And this makes sense because you will not exist anymore as a, as a taxpayer. So that's why deregistration is important. So you need to look at all the cycle of the taxpayers, which start with tax registration. This is the backbone of the process because, as we said before, tax administrations, the focus now is not by tax, by functions, by client, uh, it's by process. And what is the process? What is the life, ta life cycle of the taxpayers, which are um, tax registration, start with tax registration, and will finalize with deregistration. 
So this is a key to, to, to consider as well and to align all your tax registration with your Emirates ID, with your, um, with your uh, trade license as well. Just cross check all these documents to have a consistent data. Right. And uh, I think let's move towards the key challenges now as well. So I'll skip the polling question there. I think we are, we are running a bit out of time. So uh, I think Dana, you have rightly highlighted some of the very key points uh, for any enterprise when they are looking at a solution provider or when, whenever they are looking to doing e-invoicing implementation. Yes, Dana. Uh, no, I just I just think before we we jump into challenges, I think uh, it's good to ask uh, and mute any of our audience uh, what they consider, what they are the main challenges they are having now. If they can share that as well, will be good. It's just to have mm. a. Uh, to, to receive, uh, to know what they need as well. So is anyone right. from the audience that want to talk about the challenges that may face or the share experience that may they face in the in, in Saudi? In audience, you can put your points in the in the QA part. I don't think they can do the chat or they can comment, but yeah. Okay. Nope, we don't have anything yet. Okay. Then you can carry on onto the yeah. thing. I think we are running so, short time. So. Correct. So uh, whenever we talk, we are talking about the challenges. I think uh, it goes back to the uh, source of truth of transaction, or or getting to a single source of data and single source of truth for any invoicing. So where the transaction is initiated and how it is reported to the authority, there should be a three clear digital link between the source of the transaction and the authority and with people to the buyer as well. So uh, the whole transaction, there should be a digital trace of it, as well as it all should be validated all all the touch points. And secondly, uh, it will be challenging for uh, for enterprises to ensure that they have different formats in different systems. So uh, each of the systems com comes with their own set of data fields, but the authority requirement is quite uniform and centric. So you need to ensure that your source system data is converted into the format in which the authority has requested it. And at the same time, it is then submitted to the buyer as well. And that's where the validation would come into picture, whether uh, I talk about the verification of an invoice, which ensures that your invoice is a valid invoice from a VAT perspective, or at the same time, ensuring that, that the child and the header level of the of those invoices, whether it is rounding off of that uh, invoice or whether there is an adjustment due to credit note, all those complicated scenarios are taken care by the technology rather than somebody doing it manually. And with that, it brings me to ensure that what type of framework it is going to come in into UAE. Now, as Neeraj rightly highlighted that VAT and e-invoicing are two separate mandates, but mm -hmm. can they be looked at in silos? Well, the answer is no, you cannot look them in silos. So for e-invoicing, the framework which is coming in into UAE is called five corner people framework. And here the corner one is the supplier who is issuing the invoice. The corner two and corner three are the service providers. And when we say service provider of, of an AE invoice, they will be people accredited service provider. So they should be people accredited access point globally, as well as within the UAE by the Ministry of Finance and FTA. And these access points will be responsible to ensure that they are integrated to your ERP or your billing solution where the e invoice is getting generated. So that when as a supplier, you are issuing the invoice, it is flowing to this corner too. It is getting validated by this particular platform, by the service provider, and then it is transmitted to the taxpayer, to the buyer, who is actually going to receive it and accept it. And the corner four within this ecosystem is your buyer or, or the receiver of this e particular e invoice. In this whole ecosystem, generally the people framework has been uh, initiated or incepted in Europe. It means pan European open people uh, you know, platform for online sharing, but Technically, there were the initially four corners. So the invoice or even other documents such as contracts, POs and credit notes were shared across a common network. And those could be shared across boundaries, like across countries as well. 
that was the inception of the people framework and now it is getting extended for e invoicing so here what we see is a four corner model right from a supplier to a receiver uh, with taxpayers wanting to know more data or wanting to do analytics on the data and ensure that the VAT gap is reduced, they've added corner five. The corner five is reporting of all the transactions by corner two to the tax, tax authority. So here, corner five is the tax authority. They have added themselves into the framework. And then corner two is responsible to ensure that whatever e invoices they have validated and transmitted across must be reported onto the corner five to the tax authority. And that's where the data warehouse comes into picture. So what, what authorities are now trying to do is, since they have the VAT at a summary level, they will have the e invoicing at a transaction level. They can now do a lot of further data analytics onto the overall uh, uh, transactions which are happening. Whether the first and foremost very basic will be e invoicing versus your VAT return. So they will be able to reconcile both of them and then highlight any issues if there are gap between your e invoicing and VAT return. We have seen this happening in, in Saudi Arabia. So any enterprises or any companies who are having any gaps between their returns and their e invoicing are getting audited or getting notices from the tax authority. So that's an overall framework of, of five corner people. Uh, you, can, you can ask me any questions onto the questions portal if you have for this framework. And now going back to the solution. So we have talked about the challenges, whether it is you know get, having a single source of truth or getting validation of the data or ensuring that the right data fields are also populated. And even whether the VAT and the invoicing should be looked separately or in a conjunction. Well, our take on to the solution is to have a single platform which is getting integrated to your ERP, to your billing system, to your POS systems which ensures that the data is getting collected, validated, and then transmitted across to the authorities and, and to your buyers as well. So this solution in between ensures that it is able to collect data from all the key sources where the e invoicing is getting generated, as well as it is validated as per authorities norm. So um, based on the people framework, there will be a set of fields which will be needed as well as some validation. So it will validate it accordingly as well as it will do the ratification. So as we say, it will validate the invoice basis on the VAT positions and the VAT regulations. And the single platform will do the e-invoicing as well as VAT return preparation. And what it allows you to do it, the any uh, reconciliation gaps which we were trying to highlight from the overall perspective, whether it is about having gaps between your e-invoicing and VAT for which you can get audited by the authorities, those all go away because we have a single platform where all the transactions are coming to and then are used for both the purposes of e-invoicing and VAT. And ideally onto this overflow of transactions from your system to tax authority as well as to your buyer, uh, the, the transaction will be always in a digital platform. So it is all, it is, to ensure that there is no manual intervention. If there is a manual intervention, it would actually mean that the data could be tempered and it is a non-compliance from a digital linking perspective. So the e-invoicing, any manual intervention within the e-invoicing could be, could be considered as a tempered e-invoice. And we have, from the challenges to the solution, you would have seen that, well, it is a lot of burden for a taxpayer to ensure that they get the right processes in place or they put in the right system to ensure that e invoicing is done and overall what is the benefit for a taxpayer or a large enterprise well what we have seen with our experience in different geography is uh, it not just helps into ensuring that your outward liability is streamlined because e invoicing is something that you have generated and you have sent to your buyer but also with e invoices and if authorities are providing you the apis you you are able to have more robust your uh, input credits or your vat input credit is also very streamlined because uh, the gaps or the conflicts that we have seen recently into the Middle East where uh, the vendors are saying they did not issue the invoice against which a buyer has taken the credit, those all issues go away. The issues with the fraudulent invoices, fake invoices, they all go away because the invoices are now part of a digital channel. They are being reported to the authority. So your liability as well as your input credits are all verified and checked and they are in line with the compliance regulation of, of a particular regime. And at the same time, any issues where, where there is a cross verification of, of liability is again verified and you can ensure your 
uh, access point can provide you value addition features which actually verifies the e invoice before you take the credit and that all ensures that you you don't you have very less leakages or you have very less chances of being exposed to an audit from the tax authority also you should look at e invoicing versus vat reconciliation as a, as a regular process so whenever there is there is e invoicing is rolled out and you have gone ahead with it well the job doesn't end with just reporting of the transaction you need to ensure that whenever you are doing your monthly vat filing uh, your e invoicing data and your vat return are are verified and reconciled because if they are not then authorities are going to verify or going to find the gaps and do do the further audits for the taxpayers on top of it and in all of these these challenges and solutions well technology has been a very pivotal and what we have seen over over the past few years is the technology adoption at the authorities and is going at a way faster and compared to how the technology adoption or the technology enhancement is happening at an enterprise level. Uh, there is large enterprises are still having legacy softwares, whereas the authorities are leveraging AI and data analytics to ensure that they are making the most of the transactions and the and the returns and the VAT returns data that they have from the taxpayers. So hence the time is now to ensure that uh, enterprises also adopt the technology and ensure that they are at least at par with the requirements so the reconciliation or the verification that authorities do you do that beforehand within your systems itself so more, less chances of any tax exposure whenever you are doing your returns filing or uh, any any filing for that matter and that will also include your cross verification of your input credits it will also ensure uh, your reconciliation of your imports and exports. It will also ensure that uh, your tech data is able to handle large volumes that you are generating. Now, coming to the interlinking of all of the data, I think Diana also mentioned that your trade license and your uh, company registration for your trade a corporate tax is separate and at the same time there are custom authorities well this is where the authorities are looking to inter interlink all of your data whether it is customs whether it is trade license your e invoicing data and vat and having all of that collated into a single platform which actually mean for them is more visibility and better audits and better uh, vat vat gap reduction so for, for an enterprise, also it makes a lot of sense to ensure that whatever system that they are implementing is able to integrate to as many systems as possible. So having a single platform where your e invoicing and VAT related problems are solved, as well as you are able to integrate with the custom authority data and do the bill of entry and your customs reconciliation to ensure that all your transactions are in line with the, with the VAT regulation. Then what what has been your experience with with different trade license? I mean, the registration of a, of a company bases the trade license, bases the customs, and and how the you know challenges around the same for whenever they are going in with the tax registration. So uh, basically, um, some tax administrations are uh, uh, check. Uh, it depends of the uh, profile. Basically, they profile the co the taxpayers. Uh, taxpayers um, who are so uh, basically normal activities, performing normal activities, it's fine. But companies who are kind of dormant companies and suddenly mm -hmm. they wake up and they just invoice uh, random things and uh, not according, the invoices are not in line with the economic activities. So this is where this is high risk. So what's happening is that some use cases studies as well um, where tax administrations uh, just check, highlight these companies uh, as a risk profile, mm -hmm. a risk, and they check not only the trade license, but also the identification of the uh, owners of, of the company. So in some cases in, in Europe, uh, they found out that in, I think in Poland, they find out that these people were just homeless people that created a company to sell invoices. And this is the way they just, a, another company was having more input tax 
and of course they pay more in less tax or sometimes they were in the in 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 uh in claim position so and uh, this is a, a use cases it's not only trade license but also identification who are the your uh, uh the owners of the company are uh, all people are put in high risk because how uh, old people is going to have a company and you know so normally these are the profile as well the owners of the company they just uh, put a clock share data trade license and um, identification of the owners of the companies and one thing that i want to mention as well is a paper framework is just a framework but in reality uh, each jurisdiction that is going to adopt people they will need to develop the unique data dictionary because one invoicing implementation is not the same as uh, any other country you, you can't expect that the invoicing implementation for the UAE will be the same as Saudi Arabia uh, and the reason why is because the legislation is different because um, taxpayer culture is different and the needs are different as well so each jurisdictions they have a unique uh, uh, impose in implementation and this is one of the things that uh, we can't expect the paper framework is just a framework is easy no basically UAE will need to develop their own data dictionary based on their goals they want to achieve as population of reality return so basically this is something that uh, I want to highlight and for me uh, the way to start now I would say uh, just make sure you are compliant with the current legislation at least are you issuing the tax invoices correctly uh, and the quality of the data for me number one is the quality of the data having a master data clean master data uh, to start with uh, identify your catalog of goods and services if and the taxability as well that is right um, and if you are issuing the correct tax invoice uh, and they are currently compliant with the uh, current le legislation. For me, these are the tip, uh, top three priorities at the moment and uh, how companies can start uh, preparing, the, right. preparing themselves for uh, electronic invoice implementation. Very right. said. I think I was just coming to that only that, okay, how the company should now plan for e-invoicing. And uh, you rightly mentioned uh, that starting early and doing all the homework, basic readiness check in place before you actually do your implementation of e-invoicing because e-invoicing is not just reporting of your transaction to the authority, but it is also ensuring that your master data is cleaned up, is ensuring that every transaction that you are doing is validated from a VAT perspective. And at the same time, you have the right framework ready as well as you have the right ecosystem for the e integration exposure. So. Uh, the first step for me will be to always ensure that what are the manual processes that I'm doing as a taxpayer and what is what is the corrected approach that I should do. I should do all the master and the VR and cleanup and at the same time then take it forward to ensure that I have the right tax determination, right validation, have all the integration checkpoints done and then I have a final automated solution which does the invoicing for me. And I think a quick recap. Uh, so. Uh, I think we, we are almost a uh, little bit up on our timing as we decided, but uh, uh, what we have gone through today is, well, e invoicing is there. I'd say it's not coming, but it's almost here. And it is more to ensure that uh, it is a standardized approach, but having the complications in place. But if you start early and try and mitigate all those complications, uh, one of the methodologies we'd say, we say on impeeling approach. So going to the root causes ensuring that you are fixing all the issues that you have or all the gaps which which are there in your system whether it is any manual process uh, any manual uh, invoicing that you are doing uh, any legacy system which is uh, not able to integrate to any of the applications trying to see how you can upgrade it and then taking it further to ensure that you have the right solution providers in place and start with your project of e invoicing implementation and one of the pain areas that we have seen is a lot of companies are in the middle of their ERP upgrade while they have to comply with the e invoicing. So it becomes more complicated for them. But if the, the service provider is able to handle uh, that complications for them, the, the situation is quite easy and the overall uh, stress for, for you know, having a ERP upgrade in the middle of the e invoicing rollout is streamlined by ensuring that you have the, have the right, right uh, solution provider partner with you.
Uh, with that, I think we are pretty much done. Let us quickly look at the questions. If we have any, we are uh, we have, we have crossed over time limit. I think uh, I think there yes. are there aren't much questions. I can we can end the uh, yes webinar. Thank you so much for your patience and thank you so much Akash and uh, Dana for your contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that. Yes, yeah, Shivani, you want to say? Yes. Um, Thank you everyone for your time. A big thank you to Neeraj, Akash and Diana. I hope this session was insightful for you all. Once again, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.